Hi friends, today I am going to discuss about most important signs in ENT along with its images. Let's start. First is cartwheel sign. Cartwheel sign is seen in ASOM, acute superator otitis media. See, this resembles a cartwheel. So, it is seen in ASOM. Next is Schwartz sign or flamingo pink blush means see here there is pinkish or bluish hue is there no not bluish pinkish hue is there which is like flamingo color like flamingo bird is in a third color so this is seen in otosclerosis the Schwartz sign or flamingo pink blush is seen in otosclerosis next is Rising sun sign or felp sign is seen in glomus jugulare. See, rising sun. Here, that reddish color is there. That is, looks like a rising sun. So, that is rising sun sign. And felp sign is this erosion of this jugular tympanicum is, is there. That is felp sign. It is seen in CT scan. Next is target sign or halo sign it is seen in traumatic csf leak see there is a paleness is the csf and wherever is inside is red color is there this is blood see here this represents blood and surrounding uh, whitish color is csf this is like a target or something halo is there so it is whenever this sign is seen it is nothing but traumatic csf leak next is gressinger sign gressinger sign is seen in sigmoid sinus thrombosis this gressinger sign is named after wilhelm gressinger which who was a neurologist and psychiatrist why this sign like sigmoid why this sigmoid sinus thrombosis looks like this Due to thrombosis of mastoid emissary vein, this bluish discoloration around the mastoid is seen. It is most commonly a complication of acute otomastoiditis. Acute is important. Acute otomastoiditis complication. We will see this sigmoid sinus thrombosis which is nothing but Grissinger sign. Next is Reservoir sign. Reservoir sign is seen in mastoiditis. See, there is a profuse discharge is there like a reservoir. So, this is nothing but a mastoid reservoir sign. Next is lighthouse sign. Lighthouse sign is seen in mastoiditis or acute superative otitis media. See, this is this look like a lighthouse. See, lighthouse. So, lighthouse sign mastoiditis or asom next is this is the most important sign which is nothing but thumb sign see it it look like a thumb see thumb thumb projecting so this is thumb sign it is seen in epiglottitis next is steeple sign steeple sign see this tapering end which is like a church steeple is seen here which is nothing but steeple sign, which is seen in croup or laryngotracheobronchitis, LTB. So, this is steeple, this is steeple, croup or laryngotracheobronchitis. The next sign is antral sign or Homan Miller sign, which is seen in angiofibroma. See, this is antral sign or Homan Miller sign. The anterior bobbing of the posterior wall of the this is maxillary antrum posterior wall of this maxillary antrum is bowing into the anti bowing anteriorly which is nothing but antral sign that is seen in angiofibroma see this bowing of this posterior wall of this maxillary antrum see, the anterior bowing of the posterior wall of maxillary antrum is antral sign or holman miller sign seen in angiofibroma the next one is omega shaped epiglottitis 
ओमेगा शेप्ड ओपिग्लो एपिग्लोटाइटिस एपिग्लोटिस इज सीन इन लरिंगो मलेशिया इट इज नॉट एपिग्लोटाइटिस ओमेगा शेप्ड एपिग्लोटिस इज सीन इन लरिंगो मलेशिया सी दिस इज लुकिंग लाइक ओमेगा ओमेगा नॉर्मल दिस इज द नॉर्मल एपिग्लोटिस हाउ इट लुक्स बट हियर सी ओमेगा शेप्ड एपिग्लोटिस इज सीन दिस इज सीन इन लरिंगो मलेशिया नेक्स्ट साइन इज हेनाबर्ट साइन which is seen in congenital syphilis hennebert sign describes a positive fistula test without any clinical evidence of middle ear or mastoid disease it is associated with congenital syphilis and may also be present in meniere's disease means whenever this positive fistula test without any clinical evidence of middle ear is there then we need to suspect two things one is congenital syphilis and sometimes it may be also meniere's disease next sign is like similar to this hennebert sign like confusion so many people confuse this hennebert sign with this sign hitzelberger sign this is seen in acoustic neuroma see hitzelberger sign acoustic neuroma and don't confuse with it hennebert sign this is hitzelberger sign acoustic neuroma hitzelberger sign is seen in acoustic neuroma it occurs due to the involvement of this facial nerve see this is acoustic neuroma here this facial nerve is running whenever this facial nerve is involved this this is the this is hitzelberger sign whenever facial nerve is involved see i will let me study this hitzelberger sign is seen in acoustic neuroma it occurs due to the involvement of seventh cranial nerve there is an early involvement of this sensory fibers which causes hyposthesia of posterior meatal wall this is one of the mc most commonly asked mcqs in acoustic neuroma which fibers involved early that is sensory fibers of the seventh cranial nerve remember not fifth seventh cranial nerve is most commonly involved and early involved which causes this hyposthesia of posterior meatal wall hyposthesia of posterior meatal wall they ask anterior meatal wall no it is hyposthesia of posterior meatal wall this is not hyperesthesia remember this is hyposthesia of posterior meatal wall which represents hitzelberger sign and don't and we need to remember we will confuse it with hinnebert sign which is seen in congenital syphilis thank you friends